Hey everyone, my name is Shannon Kennedy and I am the community manager of the Add One Challenge. Today I have a special guest with me, one of our Add One Challengers and finalists. Heather, um, why don't you go ahead and take a moment to introduce yourself, let us know what language you studied as a part of the Add One Challenge and why you picked that language. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Heather Snodgrass. I'm 38 years old, I'm from the United States. For um, the I1 challenge, I studied Italian, and uh, the reason for it, I don't even really remember the reason anymore. I just, I remember a few years ago um, for an Indiegogo campaign, um, there was a short film called um, Il Turno di Notte lo Fanno le Stelle, which in English was The, the Night Shift Belongs to the Stars, and um, it was partly in Italian, partly in English, and uh, I met uh, the director, Eduardo Ponti, and some of the uh, producers, and at the time I knew maybe two words in Italian, and one of the producers jokingly says, you have to learn Italian now, so, Svita Accidata, challenge accepted, and you know, that was several years ago, so I decided to make good on that. So you have a little bit of a unique story when you started the challenge, though, because Italian wasn't the language you initially picked, was it? No, I wasn't. Originally, I was going to do French. And partway through the challenge, you decided that Italian was going to be a better fit for you, so you made the switch, right? Yeah. I had looked up some uh, preliminary sources for French, which that's something I could explore later, but uh, in a way, it's kind of like English with the weird pronunciations and everything. I thought, there is no way that I'm going to be able to do this for 90 days. I will rip my hair out. So I'll just go with Italian, at least I have a background in that. And what drew you to the Add One Challenge? Just the, the idea of accountability. But, um, you know, if I do this, I'm actually going to commit to learning Italian, not just you know, to be able to speak tiddlywinks or whatever, actually use the language. So when you started doing the challenge, what was your approach? What were you expecting to do? And how did you think you were going to participate in the challenge? Um, well, originally when I did it, I thought, okay, you know, um, I could find some sources. I can, you know, go through the material. I can speak when I need to. Wrong. Doesn't work like that. Speaking is like the number one thing with this challenge. And you really do have to speak a little bit each day. You can't just say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. No, you have to do it now because when it comes time to do that 15-minute conversation, you need to be able to speak. You can't just sit there and uh, and, um for 15 minutes. 90, 90 days, that's plenty of time to um, be able to find someone to do conversation with and you know, maybe you want to decide a certain topic to talk about and instead of just sitting there talking about the weather and other mundane things. You really wouldn't do that in real life. What were some of the things that you did in the challenge that you thought worked really well, aside from doing as much speaking as you can? Uh, well, I took lessons. Um, I went on italki. I took, um, <clears throat> excuse me, lessons with uh, Valentina Stella. She's very good. Um, highly recommend her. Um, I took lessons for maybe like twice a week. Uh, and toward the end, I picked up a little bit. Uh, beyond that, I didn't really do anything different than I would normally do. I just uh, I wrote in a journal. Um, I found some songs I really like, you know, to be able to hear the language. I looked, you know, for different podcasts. Um, there was uh, one thing called Coffee Break Italian, which is a little different than other podcasts because you have a teacher, you have a native speaker, and then you have somebody who's learning along with you. So, yeah, and that person does make mistakes at times, so it, it's not totally scripted. It was really nice. Other than Coffee Break Italian, were there any other particular resources that you found really helpful? Um, Duolingo, I've uh, used that off and on for years. It's it's pretty good for the basics. Uh, I, I had already gone through the uh, Italian for English speakers tree a long time ago, so I switched to what's called the reverse tree, English for Italian speakers, because I was kind of like in the beginner stage of that, and there was more writing Italian 
in that than doing actual English. So um, that was a big help. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I really did. I mean, there were the many challenges I did, which were very beneficial. Just for reference, what was your study commitment? How many hours per week, how many days per week, or how many minutes per day, I should say? Um, I, I wasn't quite sure going into it what I would be able to do. So I, my minimum was uh, four days a week, 30 minutes those days. I ended up exceeding it unless I was maybe that week that I was in London, you know, but even then I still had lessons. How did you fit studying into your daily schedule? Because I know you have other commitments and things. So when did you study and how did you make that work for you? Uh, usually I studied in the evening um, because I really didn't do anything after work. I had been a gamer for years, but I'm on hiatus from that. So I used that time to uh, focus on Italian. And ended up being a lot of time. I was, <laughs> I realized I did a lot more gaming than I thought. And so, I mean, there was really uh, no problem finding the time to do it. It's just finding the commitment to do it. That can be a little frustrating. What was your strategy for creating your videos? Um, well, one of the things was be creative. So I didn't just want to sit there, turn on the camera and speak. I wanted to be a little entertaining. So that's why I'm in my day zero video. I, I don't know if anybody's heard of Rejected. It, it's this really long animated film, supposedly like ideas rejected by the Oscars or something. And there was uh, this skit, somebody saying my spoon is too big and then I'm a banana. So I did that in Italian. I mean, it seemed funny to me. And it's just something I would usually pull out, you know, any language that I would pick out. I would, you know, learn my spoon is too big and I'm a banana. So I did that. And then for another video, I kind of did a parody of ASMR, uh, which I like uh, foreign language ASMR. It's very relaxing. Um, and uh, for that, like I'd use the phrase, e una lotta vera, which I've been told was rough translation of the struggle is real. Which, yeah, <laughs> learning a language can be very struggling at times. But other than that, you know, I just I wanted to stick to what I knew and not try to be too fancy with it because we're really not there to impress anybody. So let's talk about your feelings creating the videos. Like, how did you feel before creating them and then after you had created them? And then as far as your progress between 0 to 30, 30 to 60, and 60 to 90? Well, usually the the hardest video is the first one, I think, especially if you're not used to doing videos. I'm, I'm, even today, I, I'm still have a hard time to, I mean, right now I'm, I'm live, so <laughs> I'm talking on camera in English even. I don't even really like talking in English, so I, it's there is that bit of stage right there. So I do have to just kind of soldier through that. But after the first video, it can get addicting where you just, you do a benchmark video and then you kind of want to do other little sub videos, like maybe, you know, where you're, you're counting or uh, you're maybe, I don't know, wrote a grocery list and you want to read it out loud just to put it out there. People can listen to it. Um, but um, I've watched, the the zero thirty and sixty videos before the day ninety I cannot get all the way through it's just too long and I know that I'll find mistakes in it that I shouldn't be making after ninety days but it happens. You had mentioned that you went on a trip during the Add One Challenge, but as far as other hurdles or other um, things that might have kind of affected your study and your progress, like maybe motivation or plateaus or things like that. So what sort of things? in addition to your vac vacation, did you face like that? And what did you do to overcome them? Um, well, my oldest cat actually died right in the middle of the challenge. And so that was very rough. I'd had that cat since just before I turned 17. I'm 38 now. So with that, I just, I had to, you know, kind of step back for a couple of days and, and deal with that. And I mean, yeah, it still hurts, but, um, you know, eventually I move on. Um, can't really remember what I did. I know that it happened on a Thursday and 
for a while, Thursday was kind of like a designated break day that you know, I might just, you know, do five minutes of Duolingo just to do something, but I had no real commitment. So I mean, it was kind of weird, but, you know, it was a blessing that it happened on that day. So it's like, well, now this is a real emotional break day. And that was fine. But um, beyond that and the trip, no, I didn't have uh, anything pressing that I had to deal with. Some work, but you know, that's only a few hours a day. And what did you do when you were on vacation? Did you keep studying? Did you log a couple of nays? How did you manage that? Um, well, I took, um, took a couple of lessons. I wrote in a journal. Um, I actually never had any nays because I had, <laughs> well, I had, you know, like that bare minimum. <laughs> set aside so it was like you know if I surpassed that I was like well that was easy you know I, I had like three free days so to speak that um you know I could just you know call those break days if I really wanted to um I think you know, maybe with that you know there were like three days so I was just like I don't want to study at all and you can't make me so that that was you know really the only time that you know, I would just have like a hard no or something. So let's talk about your day 90 video in particular. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what you were expecting going into it and how it actually went and maybe some of the things that you talked about in your video. Uh, my day 90 video, I s was stressing about that probably from day one. <laughs> uh, like you do. Um, but um I ended up uh, recording the video with uh, my tutor, Valentina, uh, which was the best option because, you know, we'd worked together for most of that time. So, you know, we could feed off of each other. Um, and uh, we were talking about like what I could do, you know, have a real topic that I could talk about. She could ask questions and whatnot. Um, Originally, there was one topic I was going to do. I won't mention it because I'll probably do it for a later challenge. Um, and then I got to look at it and I was like, I think this might be a bit too big right now. So I put it on the back burner and I decided to talk about my trip, like uh, London in general and the delays. I mean, there were so many delays in the trip. It's not funny. I could laugh about it now. But at the time, no. So I talked about my trip, um, what I did, and different things like that. And then before I knew it, when I cut the camera off, it was 21 minutes long. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, no way, no way that was 21 minutes. I was purposely not looking at the counter. And what would you say your biggest challenge is come after the add challenge? What was your biggest takeaway? Uh, the biggest takeaway... Uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's with really anything in life. I guess maybe even riding a bicycle, you, you would forget somehow, but with language learning, yes. So, I mean, at the, the present moment, I'm still taking lessons once a week to keep uh, the language there and learn a little bit. And um, I do plan to do the next challenge coming up. I haven't decided if I'm going to do Italian again or not, if I'm going to do something else, just to uh, give myself a little bit of a break. But, um, yeah, it's just, you don't do the challenge and go, well, I'm done with that, and then not do it again and expect to retain the knowledge. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what would your advice be to someone who's just starting the Admin Challenge? Um... Speak every day, even if it's just five minutes, um, to yourself. Uh, a lot of times what I did, because our, our third mini challenge was to log total speaking time. And what I would do is I would just randomly say stuff while driving in the car to and from work. You know, for example, um, um, una chiesa e la giù. There's a church over there. Um, just random stuff like that. Maybe something comes on the radio and you, know, you talk about you know, what song it is, if you like it or not. Um, I use music a lot because that was kind of the focus of my lessons, um, which paid off for me. 
but that's really it is to go into it yeah it's going to be a lot of work uh, with the many challenges and whatnot but really you should try your best to do them and if you, you don't make the many goals that's okay um you still have your other things to do be involved um in the slack group um facebook there's um like the alumni page you talk to people that have done the challenge many times over uh just you know get to know your people it's not a race it's not a contest i mean you, it's okay to have kind of like you know uh friendly competition or whatever which i mean i did yeah you know, kind of you know have people that keep me on toes i mean the, the mckenzie you know um she, she's a good example the one of the people who won you know i mean i was very impressed with uh, her progress and kind of used her as kind of like a thing like oh, i gotta keep ahead i gotta keep ahead you know because i had the the background that's how you maybe she didn't have but the big thing uh don't um uh, like don't get angry <laughs> i guess maybe don't you know if, if you have a, a big fail for the day that's okay you know just you know, pick yourself up and try again tomorrow and uh just join the challenge you you won't learn anything that way everybody would do it if uh, that's how you learn the language, you do have to put in time. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Embrace the suck, <laughs> because that's how it's going to be. You, you're going to be terrible in the beginning. That's just how it is. I mean, there there are days that I will forget how to English, as I say. <laughs> how to English? I mean, it it still happens, but you know that could be that could be dementia. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, there there will be uh, a lot of times that you'll just say something, and then you're looking back, you'll say, what? That doesn't make any sense, even though it did at the time, but that's part of it, learning from your mistakes. Well, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for participating in the Advent Challenge. It was definitely a pleasure getting to see your updates. They're very entertaining, and I always look forward to them. <laughs>